I have decided to really put the Omnipod 5 to the test for my first meal by having a bread bowl. So we're going to bowl this like a million grams of carbs and uh, see how it goes. Where am I at? One third. See, it actually brought me down really good, and I'm I'm pretty pumped about that. So that's exciting. But I'll give myself a hefty pre bolus and see how it handles the bread bowl. So I've made it through the first 48 hours, which are typically what I understand to be some of the worst. And I will say it was not great. My first meal was, of course, that bread bowl. I got up to 400 somehow. And I, I consider myself with my looping DIY loop that I had before I put this on, I can eat a bread bowl and not go up to 400. I can stay in range. So that was kind of strange. I think I maybe needed to decrease my insulin to carb ratio possibly on this system. I have also just decreased my insulin sensitivity factor. I'm, I don't know. I'm just hanging out sort of in the 200s right now and it's fine. It's definitely better than control IQ, I will say. I, I think it keeps me a little bit tighter. I'm still kind of trying to figure it out and I'm only just now over that 48 hour hump. We'll see if it gets any better. I'm hoping it does. I'd like to be like maybe under 200 a little bit more. It's been a couple of weeks and I will say I needed to turn off automated mode during my Thanksgiving vacation because it just was not, it just wasn't working for me. And I think a little bit of that is a combination of the stress I experience when I'm hanging out with my family. I really love them, I do, but for some reason my blood sugars just get super duper high when I'm with them. And I was in a different type of environment. So I was on top of a mountain. We know high altitudes can sometimes mess with your blood sugar, your sensitivity to insulin. Holiday dynamics are just a little bit more stressful too. So I was definitely asking Omnipod 5 to do a lot more than it probably was capable of. But I was in the 300s, which is not super common for me. I was not really overeating. I wasn't eating anything particularly like crazy and it was just like kind of wild. So that was disappointing. And I had adjusted it to the point where I was, I decreased my insulin to carb ratios and my insulin sensitivity factors and upped my max basal pretty significantly. And it just was not able to keep up. I was expecting to hang out, you know, probably in the 200s, but certainly not the 300s. I was regularly going on hikes, so I was fairly active as well. And and it was just strange. So I turned it off and everything was fine after that and just sort of treated it like a dash. I also decided to test the theory of putting the pod in a place where it was not aligned with the Dexcom and it will not work. So just FYI, if you were wanting, wanting to try that out, which uh, again, it just kind of sucks because I just have limited real estate and I would like to be able to switch sides of my body. That does not seem to be an option with automated mode. I've been wearing it. I've just recently started my period and I have been wearing it on automated mode and it works like a dream. I think if you're in a situation where you are very sensitive to insulin, which a lot of people with type 1 diabetes are still, especially younger, more spry people like children, then this is going to work really well for you. I think it's a great option, but it will definitely it has quite a learning curve and I'm still, I'm still figuring that out. I'm going to give it about a month before I probably give you my final thoughts on it. All right, so it's been about a month now since I've been wearing the Omnipod 5, and here are three things I love about it. Number one, the algorithm compared to the other FDA approved AID systems is top notch. Because it is predictive, I think it really helped keep me in range. My time and range increased quite a bit using the system and it really minimized my time below range quite significantly. Number two, the tubeless life is fantastic. I'm not hugely bothered by tubed pumps, but I will say that being tubeless really was great. So if it's something that's important to you, this pump is awesome. I also love that automated mode still works even without the PDM. So I can be extra naked 
and feel good about my blood sugars. The user interface is really great and easy to use. I love that we'll be able to use this on a phone at some point. And I also really like the history function, which makes it easy to go back and look at things with my own doctor as well as with my clients. Now for the things I didn't like. Number one, it did not adjust well to high stress situation. I had the chance to use this while I was sick and it was also Thanksgiving. So I was expecting my blood sugars to be a bit out of range just based off of the stress and change in routine, but not this out of range. The pod simply couldn't keep up with my level of insulin resistance, which is really unfortunate. And there's no way to indicate to the pod that you're sick or under stress. So even with adjustments to my insulin to carb ratio and my insulin sensitivity factor, I still shot up into the 300s. I found it easier to just have the pod in manual mode during times like these. Number two, the lack of extended bolus feature is really frustrating. I did have some pizza and once again, the pod could not keep up with this type of food, which is really unfortunate. Similar sort of thing, I just take my pod out of automated mode and use the extended bolus feature if I'm going to have something that warrants it. And lastly, the thing I really didn't love about this system is just that there's no option for different types of cannulas as there is with other infusion sets. I personally don't do well with the plastic cannulas. I have tough skin, they tend to bend a lot, and uh, I'm also kind of allergic to them. So it got really, really itchy and very uncomfortable. It would be so fantastic if Omnipod could offer different types of cannulas for different individuals because we all need different things. Now, these are just some of my own opinions and experiences about the system. Everyone's experience will vary and that's awesome. I think this is a really good system for a ton of people with diabetes. So don't let my own experiences or downsides deter you from trying it out if you have access to it. Let's get into the science because science trumps all. If you like science too, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you have not already, because we love it here. In a recent small cohort study of 320 people with type 1 diabetes, participants of three age groups from ages 2 to 70, with an A1C of less than 10%, used the automated insulin delivery system for three months at home. They found in this study that the Omnipod 5 system increased time and range substantially and decreased time below range. It also was associated with significant reductions in time below range in cohorts with high hypoglycemia risk. A much larger retrospective observational study on type 2 diabetes using the system showed awesome results as well. This study found that the Omnipod system was associated with statistically and clin clinically meaningful reductions in hemoglobin A1c as well as total daily dose of insulin. If this is within your means to access and use financially, then I would highly recommend it or another automated insulin delivery system as the results are undeniably beneficial for people with all types of diabetes. 